Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunlight Film. In this tutorial, we're going to create a circle that has a city in it. Now, this could be a really cool effect for like a limited world, or you're really trying to create some, you know, stylized graphics that have maybe an outlying purpose. I don't know, but I thought this was really cool, and I felt like I wanted to do a tutorial on it. So that's what we're doing, and we're going to be working with vector objects in this tutorial. So you can download the project files and get the vector objects. You can also Google vectors for whatever you're looking for. And if you don't know what a vector is, I highly suggest you check out some of my other tutorials, which I'll link in the description. But a vector is a a layer, like a shape layer, that you can scale infinitely without losing any uh, detail. So it's basically geometry based, not really pixel based. So this is kind of what you would think about it in a nutshell. But let's go and get started here. We already have a new composition with just with a purple background. And one of the big themes of this tutorial is we're going to be looking at color palette. So we're going to be able to design something that it has nice animation and is visually pleasing. So let's come here and let's get started. The first thing we want to do is start building our city. So I have this city vector here with these buildings. And as you can see, it's you know it's kind of small. So what we can do is click on this vector icon right here, which is, you know, check that in there. And if we hit S on our keyboard, we can scale this up. Now, if we didn't click this vector icon button here, you'll see that this becomes a little bit pixelated. So you got to make sure that this thing is continuously uh, rasterizing so you have that solid shape. And remember, you can download these project files. Link will be in the description. So we have our city in here, but first let's go and grab the ellipse tool. And let's just create a quick circle. Make sure the thing is selected. And just from the center of your composition, hold down Shift and Command on a, P, uh, on a Mac, uh, or um, Shift and Control on a PC to draw out this perfect circle. And this will kind of be like the body of the circle. Of course, this is just for reference at the moment. So we can just see what we're doing. And that's fine. Now we can lower down the city a little bit and scale it in. And I, I do suggest that you should overlap uh, the circle here. So if you need to change the size of it a little bit later, you can do that. All right, so now we can go and create the ground level. So let's go grab the rectangle tool, make sure nothing is selected, and just draw out you know the rest of the ground here like so. And you can change the color to whatever color that you want. I'll do like a dark purple. Okay, so let's go and use a circle as the sky, for example. So let's go up to effect generate gradient ramp, and we'll keep the and we'll keep the ramp shape at linear ramp and. Let's set the start uh, ramp to the top here, grab the end of ramp and bring it to the bottom of the sky here, which would be like right here in the middle. And now we can come here and change our colors. So now we have our sky and now I also want to apply the gradient ramp to the city la layer here because right now it's a gray color. And we'll do the same thing. We'll bring down the start of ramp and bring up the end of ramp a little bit. And we'll set it to like a very nice purple here. So we're trying to keep that consistent, you know, color palette and we'll do like a very, you know, dark purple as it kind of hazes out there a little bit. So that's kind of cool. So it blends in there, you know, fairly nice. So we have some starting elements in here and I want to uh, create a nice little separation between the city and the, you know, ground layer here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some hills between the city and I guess you would say this would be the foreground area. So I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and I want to set this to like a very dark uh, purple here since, since, since that's our uh, color palette. And just draw out some perfect circles like this. You can hold down shift or command um, from the center here. And you can continue to just draw out some circles. And just by drawing out these circles, this will be like a really good uh, foundation for creating some hills in here. So I have my hills in here and now we have to start compositing this to make it look good. So now I have now I've got now I've created my hills in here. And now we, what we need to do is bring the hills layer underneath the ground layer. So things can kind of blend in together. And for the most part, we're only focused on like this area right here. We don't care about what's on the outside, of course. So this is so far so good. Now we can start bringing in some foreground elements to make the foreground come alive a little bit. So this is where we'll bring in some of these other vector elements. And if you have Adobe Illustrator, you can go right into Adobe Illustrator and change the color of, you know, the trees here or whatever vector that you're using. So, you know, you have a lot of customization that you can have control of. So here's a tree layer and I can come here, bring this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Layer New Solid. And I'm going to call this one Shadow. And we're going to set this layer to black and click OK. And I'm going to come here and just grab the Ellipse tool. And just draw out a thin oval like so. And I'm going to put this directly underneath our tree here. Make sure this layer is underneath our tree layer. And we hit T on my keyboard for Opacity. And I'm going to just bring down the Opacity by a touch. And move it over here. So 
and maybe we'll scale it down because that's really cool. So now we have like a tree in here. And what we'll do is we'll pre-compose this layer, call it a tree uh, group one, click OK. And you know, we move the pan behind tool onto the tree and we can scale this down. And now we have some trees in here. And basically what we're doing is we're trying to create a uh, depth here, right? So everything that's in the background should be smaller than what's in the foreground. So let's definitely keep that in mind as we build this out. So I can duplicate this tree. I can put another tree over here. And if I really wanted to, I can you know, duplicate this again. And I bring it closer to the foreground. What I can do is scale this up even more since it's you know, obviously closer to the camera, if you will. So I'm gonna come here and bring in another tree layer. So just a little bit of variation. And this is where layering becomes very important because now we want this tree element to be underneath you know, the foreground tree element. And remember, we need to grab that quick uh, shadow. So I'm gonna copy that shadow and go back to our main comp. And we'll just put this in its right place, put it underneath. And we grab the new tree with the shadow and go up to layer pre-compose. And we can call it uh, tree group two. And we can start placing this, putting this in a nice spot. And I also have this nice camper vector here, which will kind of help break up, you know, the color contrast and really bring the focus on this. So maybe this could be like your logo or something that you want to emphasize or something like that. I think it's really, you know, an opportunity to put emphasis on a specific color. But since it's kind of more of an art that I'm doing here, um, I'm just going to put a camper here and, you know, scale that in place. And maybe we'll even create, you know, a shadow for this as well. So I'll just paste the shadow in here. Make sure this layer is underneath our camper layer and we can scale this up. Okay, so we'll leave it at this and I want to really just, so we'll leave it at this for now and I really want to close this up so we can get an idea of kind of what we're working with here so far. So what we're going to do is we're going to take everything except for the background and we're going to pre-compose this and we can call this one circle world or, you know, circle comp. It doesn't really matter. Click OK. And now we have all these elements in here and what we're going to do and this you know there's a couple ways you can do this but I'm going to do it by grabbing the ellipse tool make sure the circle composition is selected and go straight from the center of your composition here and you're going to hold down shift and command on a Mac or control and shift on a PC and you're going to draw out a perfect mask like so and just create a circle like this so now we have our world of the circle here and we now we have an idea of what's in perspective and what we can do to start making this a little bit better. So obviously, you know, I think this camper is a little bit small. So let's come in here and scale this up by a touch. And this layer should be underneath a couple of the trees here. Okay, so I want to create even more depth. And I also want to add the stars and the moon. And then we got to actually start animating this. So, so what I want to do is I want to take the, this foreground tree right here, which is this tree right here, and I'm going to scale this up really big like so and make sure to set this to a vector icon and you know that's looking and that's looking pretty good so we have a little bit of depth here now I want to actually add some trees outside of the world here to even create more uh, depth and making more of an illusion if you will so I'm gonna just copy one of the trees here and I'm gonna paste it into our main composition and we can come up here, make sure that's a vector layer or rasterized. And we can kind of just put this like on the edge here. So now it'd be like, wait, what? This is, doesn't make sense here. But, you know, I think it's just really cool. We can duplicate this and, you know, we can continue to scale this up. Maybe I'll scale that one down by a touch. So automatically it just looks kind of like the world's coming out at you. And I think that's cool. And now let's go create the moon and the stars. So what we can do is just grab the ellipse tool, make sure no layer is selected, and hold down shift on your keyboard, draw a perfect circle, and maybe we can set this color to white. And we'll go to the align tab and center this up in the middle of our composition here. And we'll go into this ellipse one, duplicate it by going up to edit, duplicate. And we'll go to the bottom layer here, and we'll go to the transform ellipse one, and we'll scale this up. We'll lower down the opacity and we'll duplicate this layer again, scale this one up, lower down the opacity. And if we wanted to do it again, we could. So let's do it one more time. And lower down the opacity. So that's really cool. And maybe we can just hit S on our keyboard for scale and scale this entire thing down and just reposition it as we see fit. 
So now we have this nice moon in here. Now let's go and create the stars. So instead of just creating using like a shape layer, uh, just because that takes a little bit more time, let's go up to layer new solid. And we'll call this one particles. Go up to effect perspective. Sorry. Go up to effect simulation and we'll grab CC particle world. And let's go to the birth rate right off the start. And let's add a keyframe for birth rate. Hit you on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes. And maybe set this up to like five or six or so and move forward in time just by a few frames, maybe like 10 frames, for example, and we'll set this down to zero. And then let's set up the longevity to about like 10 or however long your scene is going to be. And then let's go into the actual particle. Let's set the particle type to a faded sphere. Let's set the particle uh, depth color to white and the uh, sorry, the birth and depth color to white. And now let's go to the birth and death size and set this down to 0 0.04 for both uh, parameters, 0 0.04. Go to max opacity, set this to 100%. Size variation can be at 100% as well. And now what we need to do is go into the physics. We need to set the velocity down to zero, the gravity down to zero. And now nothing should be moving, which that's the case. And let's move this layer over in our timeline just so we don't see those keyframes. And we can extend it out. And now what we need to do is go into the producer and we need to increase the position Y. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. We need to increase the radius Y here and we'll increase the radius X. And if we need to add more particles, uh, go to your uh, birth rate down here in the timeline and click the arrows here to go to the first keyframe and just increase the birth rate as you need to. And then we go back here to the beginning. You'll see there's a lot more particles. And now what we'll do is we'll bring this layer underneath everything just right above our circle. And now we have our stars. If we go back to our main comp here, you'll see that we have some stars in there. And we can always, you know, break this up by a little bit more uh, just so it's not as random. So now we can start animating this and, you know, go into a new world of possibilities. So let's go back into our composition here. And, you know, let's start with maybe like the moon layer, which is at the top. We can rename this layer to moon. And let's do like a rising moon. So hit P on your keyboard for position. Let's add a keyframe for this. Move this forward in time to like maybe the end of our animation, animation, which is like five seconds. And we'll just like lower this down. So now we'll have like this rising moon animation. And let's go and put this layer underneath our city elements so we can go right behind the city. So that's cool. And, and let's go to the particles here. So if this is like the night sky, we want to rotate this proportion proportionally. So hit R on your keyboard for the particle layer, add a keyframe move forward in time to the end of our animation and let's just rotate this layer by like, you know, 32 degrees. So now the stars will kind of rotate like so. I think that's cool. And now that I think of it, we'll actually move the moon over a little bit to the left here. So now it'll kind of look like it's slightly rotating with the stars. And I think that's a little bit more accurate uh, as, as for the physics of this world. So if we really want to, we can create a fire here. So make sure none of the layers are selected, grab the pen tool, and now we can kind of, now we can try to draw out a fire and fire should be kind of pointy. So keep that in mind. And we'll just try that. And let's go ahead and, you know, do like a nice, you know, red there, orange, if you will. Let's go into the shape layer here and let's go in the contents, go to the shape one, duplicate it, go to the shape one. Oh, go to shape two here, go to transform and let's scale this down by a touch. And let's just try to keep this nicely in its place. Let's change this color to like a actual fire red. And I know that's probably not the best fire I could have done, but let's go in here and let's change this to wiggle paths. And let's go into the wiggle paths one and let's bring the size down to two, the detail down to two as well. And there should be a little bit of a wiggle there. So kind of an animated fire. And that's looking good. We can rename Slayer to Fire. So let's add some wind. And what we can do is add like a point on the stem and add like a couple of points. Add a couple of points to the bottom of the tree here. And then we'll add one point to the top. And you see, we can add a little bit of wind through doing this. So what we can do here is move forward in time to maybe like two seconds or something. And just move this over this way. Go to four seconds and move the animation over this way, right? So we're gonna create just a little bit of wind in 
this scene. And maybe this is not consistent when, but that's looking cool. So we can do this for each of the tree layers. And we probably should do this first, but you know, no big deal. So I think this wraps, so I think this can wrap up the animation here. So make sure to turn on motion blur for all of our layers. Uh, go back in the circle world and turn on the motion blur as well. And turn it on at the top. And after a quick render, this is what we have and a nice little animation for our circle world. So if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, subscribe to our channel Sunduck Film for more videos just like this, and please be sure to hit us up on our social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video, and as always, I hope you have a good day.